Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. The, that's the only way you can help me uh, promote my channel and to keep me going, refreshed and inspired. And I'm very, I'm very willing to share my knowledge, especially topics in civil engineering for your benefit. So let's have the distribution of shear stresses to beam sections. For first, we have channel section. So this is the shear flow denoted by Q or shear stress. So we will call the force on the shearing force on the flange part horizontal as F as well as for the vertical uh, shear on the web as V and on the other flange at the bottom F. So this is the shear flow distribution zero here because there's no more no area yet then it increases until it reaches this corner and we'll call that QF or tau sub F in the flange, maximum in the flange. Then by symmetry, so it's the same. Then here we have QF, then remember that for rectangular uh, section, the shear stress distribution is parabolic, if you can remember. So that's parabolic and this is Q max or tau max. This is at the same point, so that's why we have the same value of QF for vertical and horizontal uh, shear flow or shear stress. So therefore, if we compute the shear force on the web, we need to have this concept on obtaining the average shear stress or average shear flow and it is equal to QF plus this parabolic region should be converted into rectangular region so that they will have the same area. Remember that the area of a parabola is two-thirds base, which is in this case the depth, times height, where in the height of the parabolic portion is Q max or tau max minus QF. So therefore, two-thirds of D times quantity Q max minus QF is equal to D times Q average. So cancel out D. So therefore, Q average or tau average is equal to QF plus two-thirds of quantity Q max minus QF. So shear flow in Newton per mm, this is shear stress in megapascals or Newton per mm square. And that's the width of the flange, depth. Then Q average, as mentioned earlier, is QF plus this height of equivalent height of rectangle. The area of this rectangle is is d times this extension and it is equated to the area of parabola which is two-thirds of d times height of parabola which is q max minus qf that's why cancel out d so the height of the rectangle therefore is two-thirds of quantity q max minus qf then plus qf that, that makes it q average or you make replace this by shear stress average. That's the same. So F is equal to the area of this shear flow diagram, which is one half of BF times QF. Then the shear force carried by the web is equal to Q average times area of the web or depth times area of Q average, because this is shear flow in Newton per 
mm, so we multiply that by simply the length, which is depth for that case. But if this is shear stress average, then we must multiply the average shear stress by the area of the web, which is d times thickness of the web. Now, in locating the shear center, we just sum up moments about that point. We will call that distance from the center of the web as x. Then the moment produced by this horizontal forces F, which is F times D counterclockwise, is equal to the moment about the moment center of this shear force V in the web. So that is F times D equals V times X. So from there, we can solve for X, F, D over V. So that's it. Then for wide flange sections, we consider the flanges and the webs as rectangular component rectangles, although in reality, there are fillets here. So that's the approximate way. So this is the shear stress diagram still maximum at the neutral axis in the web. Then we have here, we'll, I'll call this tau at the junction between the flange and the web, tau JF, where B is the width of the flange. Then if the width is width of the, or thickness of the web, then it will increase tau JW, we'll call that tau JW. Tau JW is also the minimum shear stress in the web. Again, tau JW is also the minimum shear stress in the web, while tau max at the neutral axis is the maximum shear stress in the web. So again, this is parabolic for this portion. So this is tau max and tau average. Tau max is computed from the general formula VQ over IB. Where Q is Q of the flange part, then Q of the web, half of the web part, about the neutral axis. So, tau average, again, is tau JW plus two-thirds of this height in the parabolic portion. This, is, this height is equal to tau max minus tau JW. So, that's the height, then two-thirds of that is added to tau JW to get tau average. So that's tau average. Imagine we have a rectangular stress diagram so that it is now uniform. So these are the elements of the wide flange sections. And that's the thickness of the web, overall depth. Then if this is the shear force carried by the web alone, then it is equal to shear stress average times area of the web. So that's it for this uh, distribution of shear stresses to beams. Then let's have the principle on spacing of walls, rivets, nails, or the design of uh, built-up uh, sections that are connected together by means of bolts, nails, or rivets. So there are situations that you have available spare materials and you want to join them to produce built-up sections in order to use them in a structure, for, for instance, so that you will no longer purchase or buy another structural member so that's a waste of money. What if you have an available material and you want to uh, connect them, you, you want to build them by uh, built-up sections and you just use nails depending on the material, if it is timber or bolts. So for instance, you have here two planks or two pieces of maybe steel sections, rectangular steel sections, and if you use only one, it is not enough, 
So that's why you have to to have two uh, sections, then two or more sections that are bolted together at equal spacing S. So the principle is, if we consider a tributary area for a solid section, then it is the shear resistance of the solid section that is replaced by the resistance of the bolt that replaces it because there are now two or more uh, sections that are built up. So this is the end view. Assuming there are only two uh, sections that are bolted together. So the width is B because this is the end section. And this is the tributary area. The spacing is S. So that's the spacing S. And without the bolt, of course, the upper section will slide past the lower section and vice versa. But with the presence of the bolt, the resistance, shearing resistance of the bolt is denoted by R. So that's the pushing force when the beam bends after it is loaded. And that's the shear resistance of one bolt if there is only one bolt. So the principle, therefore, is the shear resistance of the solid beam, which is equal to shear stress in that shear plane times if it is solid then the area the shear area would be b times s this b here which is rectangular the top view area b times s so this is rectangular section with dimensions b by s so shear stress in that section if it were solid times b s that's supposedly the shear resistance and because it is replaced by the presence of the bolt, because there are two sections, it will slide. And sliding is prevented by means of this shear resistance of the bolt. That's why you have to equate shear stress times Vs to R. So therefore, R equals shear stress times Vs. And since shear stress is Vq over Ib, replacing that by Vq over Ib, so we can cancel B. So R therefore equals vqs over i or simply since q equals area prime uh, y prime then r equals v times q which is area prime y prime times s over i finally if we want to derive formula for s it is equal to ri over v or v a prime y prime so that to easily remember this, it is just simply sa ri tabay. You have to review in ri. So, where r s is the spacing or pits of bolts or nails, r is the shear resistance of one bolt or nails. If there are two bolts or a number of bolts, then you multiply that by n or nails. Then V is shear force, then area prime is the area above the shear plane or area above or below the shear planes where sliding takes place. Area prime is also area bounded by shear planes or shear plane. Then Y prime is distance of the centroid of area prime from the neutral axis. neutral axis of beam section. So that's it for this situation. And we will have an we will have examples on on this.